And I spent a lot of time in Sand Patch. And I forget which tunnel this is. Is that Ohio Pile? Um, uh, Harness, I am not sure. Shoe Fly, I'm not sure what tunnel that is. But it's all been daylighted since now. Off in the background there is the old Western Maryland uh, bridge over. Is that the Ohio Pile River or is that the? Well, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> they had uh, still one uh, one unit still in Western Maryland paint that I happened to catch that one day. Uh, another abandoned Western Maryland bridge, uh, Salisbury Viaduct there. Uh, Myersdale, Myersdale, oh, Myersdale. Um, this is the uh, the Keystone Viaduct getting closer to the, the top of the grade. And here is the summit of the Alleghenies and Sandpatch Tower. And I got to know some of the operators there. And, you know, of course, you'd, you'd get favors by bringing them donuts. So I always brought them donuts. But uh, Sandpatch, here's the operator. You can just barely see him hanging out and doing a roll by of the train hanging out of his window. But uh, and there's an icy morning uh, at Sandpatch. Uh, but this is closer, this is an area you can't get to now, but this is uh, the, the west porter, portal of the Sandpatch Tunnel. And this is the east portal of the Sandpatch Tunnel on a cr cruddy day, a snowy day. Um, this was in maybe 2000, 2002, something, something like that. This actually picture, this picture was on the cover of the Trains magazine, 1990 calendar. Um, they selected my picture, so that was that was kind of neat. The westbound trailer train, but lots of pictures here at Matt's. Uh, I'm going to go through these quickly because there's just a lot of them, but they are so cool. This is uh, this was sort of my second home uh, at the big horseshoe curve here at Matt's over the years. Uh, some old stuff on CSX, uh, B and O. Um, and this was just last summer taken with the drone. Uh, a couple of shots around near Mance. Beautiful place for fall foliage as well. And for snow. And just for, for just generally really kind of cool scenery. And to, for, to the folks at home on Zoom, I'm sorry I'm running through these quickly. It's just that there's a lot of material here to cover. And I don't want you to be here all night. So... But uh, back in the day, that's Wills Creek. This is the town of Glencoe. And this was uh, taken from the overlook that, uh, gosh, that I, I have been going to for, for a really, really long time. It's become a very popular place to go to to shoot trains. This, is a, this was just a, year, a, a couple years ago uh, around Foley. Um, at the overlook there, the westbound train climbing the hill. And even when the, uh, the, the foliage is out, as you can see uh, in stick season, you still manage to get some sense of the rugged terrain there around Sandpatch uh, with all this, this amazing geology uh, up there. Uh, can you imagine the work that they did to just to carve out the railroad back then? which included some tunnels, and I spent uh, an afternoon at Falls Cut Tunnel, watched three westbounds go through there. Here's one, there's another, and yet another with an old B&O Capitol Dome uh, GP40 or so. And this was just a couple of years ago with the, with the UP uh, run through uh, heading down, down grade. Next chapter, and we're getting close toward the end here, but Chicagoland, spent a little time uh, in Chicago um, when I was doing some business in the early 1980s uh, and um, got some shots on the IC. Uh, here's an interesting shot. Um, two signals, only one track. Yeah, the, uh, the one track had just been lifted, apparently. This is near Otto, Illinois. I just remember Otto. But it's kind of a neat, a neat uh, grade shot on the uh, former New York Central Main Line around Otis, Indiana. This is a train heading down towards the Santa Fe connection. This is the uh, former Mopac uh, right around uh, Moments at Pence Tower. And the back end of Pence Tower is, uh, is the 
the Kankakee Belt Line. This is Santa Fe uh, Conrail train from Elkhart to go to Kansas City on the Santa Fe. And that's inside the tower. And a little further down around Watsika, Illinois, on the Mopac. I think this is the Kankakee River. Is that right, Bob? Yeah. Yes, thank you. And uh, a Norfolk Southern Triple Crown train. Uh, they ran them in the 80s uh, at Tolono. And this is, uh, this is a train coming up the old Wabash from, well, this is heading toward Reddick. Uh, this is all abandoned like a year or two after this shot was taken. This was like taken in 1989. So, and I think this is about the only picture of the Milky, Milwaukee Road that I ever took. I, and it was in uh, um, uh, Morton Grove, Illinois. And I just happened to catch a sprint train uh, going through there. But um, again, this was in the 80s. And this was, uh, this, was, this was before I moved to the Midwest. Uh, now these shots here are taken after, uh, but uh, out, out around Rochelle, at Rochelle, at Rochelle and uh, on the uh, Chicago Central. But I saved most of my uh, time uh, to spend on the Santa Fe. And so here's a look uh, at uh, the Santa Fe through Illinois uh, through, the, uh, through the ages. A fairly recent shot around Ancona, another Ancona shot. Uh, but uh, the Superfleet was just pretty damn spectacular. And um, this is the first Santa Fe shot I took uh, on um, around Leeds, just kind of a neat place to go to that's barren. Um, nothing there, uh, just a lot of cornfields and stuff. Uh, GB 60s probably on their first trip out of uh, out of uh, Chicago. Just look at that. I mean, they they knew how to run trains, and they they ran the wheels off of them. And BNSF still does today. Look at this, five units. <laughs> Heading off into the sunrise. But uh, kind of, I think this, this one was my Christmas card shot one year. Uh, Toluca with uh, the SF, uh, SPSF uh, merger paint scheme, ill-fated. And we were able to live through the uh, period of the Superfleet uh, when they started running these F-45s. Um, as well. <clears throat> this just a couple years ago, closer to Wilburn. <laughs> and Chillicothe, uh, the Superfleet uh, first train east. Rob McGonigal was with me, and I just remember the, uh, the reaction we both had when we saw this coming down the hill at Chillicothe. It was, uh, or uh, coming down Edelstein Hill, it was just basically, ah! You know, to see, you know, the war bonnet, we were not expecting it, but we, we turned around, made a U-turn, and caught the crew change at, at Chillicothe. Uh, this is at the GE plant, uh, brand new um, B-23, or B whatever it is, um, back in 1989 or so, um, 1990. Edelstein, Hands um, Curve. Another Hands Curve on top of Edelstein Hill, a couple of shots at Edelstein with the uh, searchlight signals just within the last couple of years. This, is a, this was 1991. Williams Field, again with searchlight signals. And it's a drone shot of the Spoon River uh, in Dehinda. A little west of Gelsberg is the media trestle. Here's a, here's a shot of it before and then taken from the other side, that's what it looks like now uh, after they, they, they built up a new trestle around it, basically, is what they did. So that's the Santa Fe. So then I got to Wisconsin. All right, I remember I didn't move to Wisconsin until 1989, but I was visiting uh, on business a couple of times. So this is the very first shot I took, and this is around Chippewa Falls uh, on the Northwestern and um, New Richmond, is that, is that New Richmond, the, 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 the yeah, uh, where, you know, you can hardly see a train there now because you can't get to the bridge, number one, and number two, they run them at night, but um, maybe occasionally do. Uh, Sioux Line, Chippewa Falls, and this was before Wisconsin Central. But 
when I uh, first moved to Wisconsin, took a couple pictures here, but I, I, I spent most of my time taking pictures in Illinois. I don't know why, it's just something I did. Ron McGonigal and I had uh, gone out on a, um, a Milwaukee area rail fan trip and uh, started off with really nice uh, weather. But by the end of the day, uh, it, uh, it, it became kind of icky. Um, now I'll point this out. This is a train from Sheboygan uh, with some local freight at the, the head end and a bunch of coal empties in, in the background. This is at, I believe it's 64th Street? 64th Street. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, all grown up now, right? So doesn't look like, like this today. It's down around the depot. I didn't shoot much Wisconsin Central in the film days, but here's like basically the only shot I ever took uh, in, uh, in the area. So uh, there's going to be a bunch of shots here taken, you know, the last couple of years. This is up uh, near, um, near um, getting closer to Itasca, um, up on the Superior subdivision. This Junction City, a train coming off of uh, the, the line to uh, Wisconsin Rapids heading toward uh, Stevens Point. Oshkosh. Another Oshkosh with the uh, RD and Ed's uh, landmark in uh, a train happened to go by. And um, when we had a boat, um, I would take it up, up there to uh, Oshkosh and, and shoot trains from this little bay. That was kind of cool. <laughs> a train coming down Byron Hill, and there it goes uh, on the up, 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 up. Brand new, uh, brand new uh, uh, GE power. Um, Bruce is the engineer on this train. Um, brand, you, know, you could smell the paint when they went by. Hoarfrost on uh, the trees at Byron Hill. Uh, she's chilly. And... Um, so that's a L508 in the background waiting uh, for this uh, for this northbound train to clear. Another uh, shot of an L508 uh, at Byron waiting. At uh, Theresa Marsh. This is near Allenton. Just a, a, a great uh, a great grain bin there. South end of Marsh siding. Near Slinger. Slinger. Slinger Road, back in, well, it was, it was CN then, but uh, they were still running some SD45s. Now, this picture I'll point out, there is a train here. Um, this is the Payne and Dolan Quarry in Waukesha. And uh, I'll, uh, Brian Schmidt, your cousin, Keith, uh, he, he pointed this shot out to me. He, he says, you know, if you, if you get up above the fence, you can get a shot of a train across this, this quarry. And, and I did that. I, I took my ladder out and I climbed up and I, I got this, this shot and um, gigantic hole in the ground. I, re, I refer to it as a, a Schmidt hole. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and he knows that too. So, um, you know, so CN used to run their L511 trains down to, to Muskego Yard. And so one day they're, they're coming back with an SD45 at Miller Park. This train in Manitowoc, uh, backing up to do a little work up there. This is at Jackson. Um, this is the, uh, the the truncated West Bend route line. Um, my uh, friend Brian Crossman was the engineer. He stopped the train for me. Uh, Brian Chekolinski was the conductor. He didn't seem to care. The late Brian Chekolinski, he didn't seem to care that uh, that that we uh, took some night shots on the main. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. Sockville, Sockville, yeah, I got a couple of shots of Sockville here. I had to because that's where I live. Um, this is that, that, that concrete arch bridge uh, in Grafton that nobody can see because it's hidden. But uh, another shot in Sockville. Now, north of there, of course, uh, uh, that, that line uh, became uh, Wisconsin and Southern. Now, of course, it's all Wisconsin and Southern. But uh, the CN guys, they tied up in Sockville, and uh, they were followed up uh, by the, uh, the Wisconsin and Southern. So I asked, uh, I did a, you know, this is another thing where donuts really seem to help. 
Uh, so we got the shot here. Jamie Hivers stopped his uh, Wisconsin and Southern train for me. We got this shot here. Uh, Ron uh, and Barry had had tied up the uh, the L five hundred seven there uh, in Softville. This is the first the first uh, Wisconsin and Southern train coming south out of. Uh, they had gone to uh, Adel that day. Uh, Jamie was running this train, but this was uh, uh, 2005 when they first started service north of Sockville. Sometimes they weren't very big trains that went up to, to Plymouth. <laughs> Al Letterman, you were standing right next to me when I took this picture. And it turned out, and in fact, uh, that's your shadow right uh, in uh, on the right lower right hand corner. Yeah, get out of my. <laughs> but yeah, this is a, a, a Horicon Janesville train at uh, Wire Road, near near to Plainville. Uh, yeah, nice nice shot of uh, the uh, Wisconsin Southern business train under the UP bridge in Randolph. Um, this is. Uh, they ran the 1003 and parked it under some spotlights in Plymouth. It was it was great. This was after most of the people went home. So, and this is uh, this is the first day I got my car stuck uh, <laughs> while chasing the 1003. So, but this is around Adel, and this is in Sockville, uh, a going away shot that just. I just happened to look behind me, and uh, I said, "Yeah, that, that that'll work." So I took that shot too. It was it was really neat. I, I we had chased it. Uh, they had run it all the way down from Plymouth, and and it was snowing, and it was kind of a neat day. And Dave, you were out, and I, you know, a bunch of you guys were out shooting that day. Uh, but this was where I was going to call it a day. And I I, I ran home uh, from here. Only live about a half a mile from here, and um, when I got home. The, the smell of coal smoke was was just wafting over the neighborhood, which was just a, a most amazing thing. So that was that was a neat experience. The business train heading to Horicon. And uh, the big boy um, uh, near uh, near uh, where were we, Bob? Near Dalton, thank you. That's right, thank you. Bob was there that day. Everybody was out that day. Now here's a here's a actual legitimate UP train crossing that bridge over the WSOR around Randolph. So, and here's a shot of a, a train uh, around Jefferson and Sheboygan. We got a few shots on the the line from Sheboygan because you know close proximity, the coal pile there for the the uh, soon-to-be-retired uh, generating station. Um, and here's looking down Stall Road before, before they cut down all these trees. Uh, that was kind of a neat, uh, a neat viewpoint before they ruined it. <laughs> um, a little lake there in uh, Cedar Grove. <clears throat> uh, Port Washington, uh, Mink Ranch Road. Uh, back before they raised the speed limit on uh, I-43 to 70 miles an hour. This is a, a shot just looking straight down, uh, I think it's County Road C with Lake Michigan in the background uh, at the south end of Port Washington with the coal empty. Buleo Parkway, which is kind of a neat spot. And this is, uh, this is a shot that you're not going to be able to get uh, anymore. Uh, well, you know, first of all, they're dumping ballast, but um, they're building a uh, highway interchange here uh, at Highland Road. So I'm on the Highland Road overpass, looking down for this uh, for this north shot of the northbound ballast train. Now this is a UP train. Uh, this is this is sadly the only picture of a train I have uh, taken with the drone with the Roundies Foods sign in the background. I, now, why they invested in such a huge sign that absolutely nobody could see was just completely beyond me, but um, so be it. Roundy's Foods was the landmark, even though nobody was, knew it was there. The old foundry there in West Dallas. Well, it looks like it was still active at this point. Working Mitchell Yard and a road railer going by. 
a marsh job working by the uh, giant boobs down on uh, uh, Jones Island. Another shot at Jones Island with a, a ship tied up for winter storage, winter layup. And the marsh job was working uh, one week. Uh, they they got uh, they were doing some track work, so they 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 ended up working during the uh, the evening. Uh, you know because I you know bought lunch for these guys. You know they kind of kind of put a little dwell time in their uh, routine so I can get this night shot. That was fun. And um, here they are picking up something that had just come in off of a ship that had been loaded onto that flat car, some kind of crane. A base or something. I'm not really sure. So they're they're backing up to to pick that up. CP also works down uh, the wharfs as as well. Now let's look at some CP pictures. And here here's a here's a train work. This is the last day. Uh, CP. This is just before they pulled all that intermodal equipment out of uh, the yard before they shut it down there on Jones Island. Train coming out of uh, Tunnel City the tunnel at Tunnel City. Uh, westbound train at Camp Douglas. Another Camp Douglas train. And this is uh, Dodge West uh, going from single track to, to two main tracks. The eastbound train. A handy, nice, beautiful beaver on the point of a eastbound train. I call this Longley's Curve because Dan Longley has taken a lot of pictures there. In fact, he happened to be there that morning giving this picture as well. One of my favorite spots is Reeseville. This was some years ago, and this was just a year or two ago. On uh, Janet was with me on uh, New Year's Eve. It was colder than sin that day, uh, but a, a oil empty. Uh, just a weird kind of kind of look with all the shadows and stuff, and the lighting and stuff, and the the heat. Uh, just the telephoto from the Maiden Lane overpass, Reeseville in the background. Yeah, Burnham Bridge with a westbound 277 train and a train coming into Amtrak across the uh, KK, uh, the Menominee Bridge. And a maintainer there looking, looking at the track. <laughs> oh, you guys know this one, right? Yeah, this was just before the bee, sting, bee, bee stings. This is a, a Chapter E Stroy trip a couple of years ago uh, at the end of the Trent Tube Spur, just before the bees came out. Chapter 12, the West. We'll go through these quickly, too. We have a couple shots in Canada around uh, Field on the CP. Um, I had a, a great tour uh, by Don Bain, gave me a tour around uh, there. We saw a bunch of trains. This is on uh, Altamont Pass. This is the Salt Lake to Oakland uh, hot Z train uh, in the hole for a local. Cool figure. At Stockton Tower, I was, uh, you know, again, up there talking to the, the guys in the tower. They didn't seem to care. They just let me take my pictures. This is around uh, closer to Niles Canyon. Another shot around uh, Altamont, out in the Central Valley, um, with a, just a train just going flat out really fast on the Santa Fe. Around Lugo near uh, Cajon Pass. Got a bunch of Cajon Pass pictures here. I'll just go through them quickly because, you know, everybody's seen Cajon Pass. Um, you know, but these were from back in the day and a few from a little bit more recent um, I'm sorry, I'm going through these fast, but uh, we're kind of running out of time here. Uh, and 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 Cajon Pass is a, a place where you can see, oftentimes multiple trains. Uh, so here I am at Phil, Hill Hill 582, um, on the the former S Southern Pacific up above, and a uh, train climbing uh, with the international containers. There's two uh, two eastbounds. I think UP won that day. Another two trains. Just no matter where you turn, there's trains everywhere. Another two trains. Uh, spent some little, little bit of time at Tehachapi. Not as much as Cajon, but a couple couple trips to Tehachapi. Um, this is kind of just a neat shot. Uh, been there a couple times. I just I just love it out there when it's green, which doesn't last long. But. Um, just trains, multi-level trains. 
it's like multi-level marketing, but uh, no, it's, it's not. It's not like that at all. So, yeah, it's a bad analogy. So, uh, Afton Canyon, and I got to thank uh, Bob here for, um, he, he was my, uh, he was my navigator that day. He was back home in Milwaukee, but he was telling me where to go. Uh, everybody loves doing that, by the way, for some reason. I don't know why, but, but Bob guided me expertly into there, and I only got stuck in the sand once. Um, but I was able to get it out before I, you know, uh, uh, expired from uh, thirst. Uh, but uh, but it, it's just barren out there. It is exhilarating just to be out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. That's Crucero siding way in the background. I think this is Basin siding. Is that right? Yeah. Um, but they're pretty short sidings. So there is actually a train way, way off in the distance. Uh, but they were running a lot of trains that day. I got very, very lucky. And I think the reason was the day I was out there was the day before they moved the big boy east. So I think they were running as many trains as they possibly could. But up at the top of Steema Hill, the light just got, kept getting better and better and better. I loved it. I, I've been back several other times since then, seen not another train. This was my, my holy grail day. But uh, of course, the, the former Santa Fe never disappoints. The Topac crossing from Arizona into uh, California and uh, spent a little time around Kingman Canyon. I love it there. Absolutely love Kingman Canyon. Here's some shots from there. This was, this was in January with the drone. And it's just breathtaking uh, up in the canyon. Uh, Route 66 goes right through the middle of it near Valentine. This is the Truxton uh, flyover, which is a brand... Brand new piece of engineering on the uh, the BNSF. Uh, kind of neat to actually be there. I was following in Jeff Wojciechowski's footsteps. Uh, he told me how to get there, where to park, where to sign in. It's ga public game land. I, I I actually saw the register where he had signed in a few months before me. It was it was like old home mate, you know. This is around Crookton. Uh, just uh, just a kind of a neat shot. Train coming down out of Flagstaff uh, with uh, Humphreys uh, Peak in the background. And then I got some shots um, closer to Winona um, between Winslow and, and Flagstaff. And uh, this is the, uh, let's see if I get this right. This is the eastbound train. This would be the Barstow to Galesburg train. Uh, the train on the right, the westbound train, was the Galesburg to Barstow train. So, uh, you know, and they use these, these three-letter designations. So the uh, designation for the train coming at us was the bar gal. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, but spent a little time uh, morning there and just got some absolutely beautiful shots uh, in fresh snow. It was like nine degrees when I got there in the morning, but you know, I'm from Wisconsin. I, I'm used to that. So a short trip to Colorado uh, back in, 1990 yielded a few of these shots. Uh, it's a joint line um, near Palmer Lake. <clears throat> and same spot uh, 30 years later. The only shot I have of a Rio Grande unit in, in action on the joint line and uh, also on the joint line around Larkspur. This is around Sholi, New Mexico, before they did the double track project there. This is just a year or two ago, around Vaughan, New Mexico, on the uh, on the line from uh, the former S Southern Pacific um, El Paso to uh, to Tucumcari. Yeah, yeah. And we spent a little time uh, in 1998. Uh, we were on a family vacation out to. Uh, the, uh, you know, Rapid City area, uh, and um, Mount Rushmore and all. And we, we did manage to get some trains near Newcastle. Uh, lovely evening with some coal trains. Uh, went back there uh, to Bill in, uh, you know, the following year or what have you. Oh, this was the same trip with, with the boys, uh, just getting all these shots. You know, just, it's like shooting fish in a barrel out there. This is beautiful sky. Um, a few years later, I, I, I got in a, a, a coal mine. I got a tour 
um, you know, watch them load this train. It was fun. This is uh, Alva, Oklahoma, one of the small sections of single track on the Santa Fe main line. Um, you can see where they did the grading in the, the back for, for another track, but I guess they ran out of money. Um, but I, I loved it out there. This is uh, Curtis Hill. Uh, the, the, the red clay out there, just orange clay, uh, just to, to really played off the colors of the BNSF engines. Love the, uh, the grassland out, out there in western Oklahoma. And finally, our last chapter, the Mississippi River, uh, where we're going to bring it all back home here. So we'll start off on the, on the CP side. This was back in 1990 or so at Bellevue. I think that's Lock 12, if I'm not mistaken. But just a couple of years ago, uh, uh, an oil empty uh, near La Crescent. Uh, here's a westbound train crossing the bridge at La Crescent. And um, here we are at Dakota. Another shot at Dakota. This is around, um, I forget where it is. It's closer up um, by Lake City, that area. Uh, Lake Pepin there where Mississippi River gets really, really wide. Uh, it's, it's sort of the same area. That's Lock 5, uh, Lock 5 in the background there. So we're at Whitford. Uh, so this is on the BN side. This is at Savannah. We're going to work our way up. Another shot in Savannah. Uh, this is in this picture is in Steve Glashinsky's BN book, actually, along the river. Taken from Savannah uh, at the Bluffs, uh, Illinois State Park. Another shot looking the other way. And there's a drone shot. This is a this is a CN train crossing. Uh, uh, on the, it's the 330, what is it, 337, 338, I forget which one is which, but but going into the tunnel there at uh, Dubuque. Potosi. This is uh, near Ferryville. Uh, just the, the lighting there just to me was 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 stellar. Uh, it was a little chilly day, but the ice is just starting to melt here in January, uh, February. We're closer to Bergen. This is north of... Uh, lacrosse around Bryce Prairie. And this is Tremplo. Uh, this is a shot of Lock 6 uh, of a, uh, um, a barge uh, locking through with a BNSF train going by in the background under, underneath the bluff there. So multimodal. The drone shot of downtown Tremplo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this shot uh, taken from our balcony of a train and a barge <laughs> going by. Kind of neat. Just a smidge up the road uh, closer to uh, Perot State Park. Uh, it was a, the fog was just burning off that this morning, and it was just it just ended up just being a really neat shot. Uh, up at Alma, it says the uh, the gas is uh, 259, 259. Uh, now it's now now it's a lot more than that now, but uh, the shot uh, here comes a westbound empty tank train. It is Alma. You're right. It is Alma at lock four, actually. This is the bridge over the Chippewa River around Nelson and Trevino, that area, and around closer to Pepin, little little north of Pepin. And um, a shot of uh, the bluffs there at Maiden Rock. And a final shot at Maiden Rock. The end. Well, so that was a, a kind of a longish program, but we tried to get through it, through it as, uh, as quickly as we could. And uh, so what we'll do here is anybody in the room have any questions? Uh, and if you do, just come right up to the microphone. I'll try to answer them for you. You can turn the light on. That would be great. 
And uh, Sal, you want to work the audio here? A any anybody uh, on the Zoom have any questions? Uh, let's see if you want to unmute yourself and. I don't for it. <laughs> Oh, oh, Mike, okay. Mike. Okay, well, first, first, I heard Brian Heckle. Go, go ahead, Brian. Uh, two, uh, two questions for you on your Long Island, Island stuff. stuff. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, was, one was I noticed on the sentries, sentries like the horns, horns, horns were on the side. The side. Um, yes. Um, it looked like that air was inside. Was that like a, that like a tunnel, clearance tunnel clearance issue? issue? Uh, I think that's just where they put them. I, I, okay. I, okay. Yeah. Um, there were also some air baffles there that, that helped um, move the exhaust past them as well. But I, uh, I believe that's where, that's where the long, it might have been a, a clearance issue. I don't know. Okay. Then you had another photo. Ed, Ed Kohler, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, Mike, Mike, as, uh, as uh, someone, someone who was, who was around, 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 around you at you the beginning, beginning and really and didn't really hook didn't up with you again, again until, until about two years, two years ago, ago. I, just I just want to, just want to congratulate you on 50, 50 years, years of wonderful, wonderful photography. photography. I, I, thoroughly I thoroughly enjoyed the presentation. presentation. And, and you know, I've got a couple of tickets from groups that says I've been a member for 50 years. So when I asked what they meant, they basically told me that you're now an officially an old part. Oh, if you're part of my friends. Yeah. And the the C420 horns on the Long Island were on the side. It was a clearance issue. Got a little thing like the Crest Pond Bridge at over the Montauk over the old Montauk division. Got it. So again, congratulations, okay, congratulations on a wonderful, on a wonderful presentation. presentation. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Anybody else have some questions? Okay, Dave Nelson, come on up here. Come up to the microphone. Dave has a question. So Mike, you started out by saying that we were seeing some early shots using an Instamatic. I'd like to hear your best guess at just how many cameras we saw being worked uh, during this presentation. And how much they cost? <laughs> so on a cumulative basis, <laughs> so well the the Instamatic cameras were 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 cheap. Um, so there was one of them. There was a there was a, a, a Konica C35. There was and then, and then the real legitimate 35 millimeter camera was the you know, Micromad, and then I got a Nikon, and then I got into Canons, a couple three four Canons, and five cannons and yeah so, and then the drones you know you know like three drones so were you keeping track of that did, did that answer your question okay good good thank you good uh anybody else well again thank you for uh thank you for your attention tonight appreciate it uh thank you all for being here in the room uh and in zoom uh appreciate it uh, and I and I want to give another sh shout out here too, to uh, to my old Long Island Fred friend Fred Ryder, who is uh, with us. Uh, Fred, if you want to just unmute and say say hello to the the crowd here. Yes, it was it was very, very pleasant seeing you guys. guys. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a an echo here. Echo here. I don't know if you can hear me, but, me, but uh, uh, one of these, one of these days, days I'd like to be there. And uh, not have to have to zoom. To zoom. To zoom. But, uh, but, uh, it was it thoroughly was enjoyable. enjoyable. I, 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 I really, really, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Terrific, uh, terrific, Ed. Um, thank, thank you, uh, Fred. Really, really appreciate it. Now, I, I, I have to, I have to point out. Where, where, am I? Am I still on? I, I have to point out here that uh, Fred was um, sort of a. a and I, you know, those of those of you who have been here before may have heard me say this once before, but but Fred was a neighbor of mine on Long Island, and he uh, he gave me my first introduction to the National Railway Historical Society. Uh, he would provide a ride uh, to the uh, to the Long Island Sunrise Trail chapter meetings. Uh, in let's see, you had a convertible then. Uh, maybe we didn't go in your convertible, but still. Uh, he was my reliable source before I had a driver's license. It, so, was, a, it was a great convertible. I wish I had it today. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So, well, thank you, Fred. I'm glad you could be here. So. 
Anybody? Just, uh, any, just, uh, last just question? another question. Yes, uh, go ahead, Manfred. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the about the, these enthematic uh, uh, pictures. pictures. Did you do did some, you editing some editing to them? To them? Oh yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> because uh, the way they're so so, uh, so uh, clear yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, I, I did do a little bit of editing, but you can't really sharpen uh, an image that isn't there. Uh, so. Um, uh, but uh, it, surprisingly, some of those very first pictures that, that were at the very top of the, the presentation, <clears throat> um, they were shot on color negatives. Uh, surprisingly, they turned out reasonably well. Uh, so thank you. Appreciate that, Manfred. So thank you again all for being here. Remember that on uh, Tuesday, the 21st of uh, June, we're having an online slideshow with Marshall Beecher, with uh, Mark Lanuza, and with uh, William Beecher. So you'll get information about that and hope you can make that. And then our next in-person meeting will be here in this room and on Zoom uh, on Friday, the 9th of September. So I, I, I hope you guys all have a wonderful summer. And uh, hey, Ward, are you going to be able to stick around and host uh, the, uh, the gab, uh, gathering here? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, Mike. My, my pleasure. Okay, thank you, Ward. Um, we can make him a host. Um, and uh, thank you all for, for being here. Thank you for, um, for joining us. Uh, thank you for your membership in the Wisconsin chapter of the National Railway Historical Society. Good night, all.